We are downtown Indianapolis at the historical and newly renovated Stutz Building, where our friend Victoria runs her business, The Pink Tub. Now, Victoria really embodies the philosophy of turning your pain into purpose, and she adds just a little flavor to it. And in a few minutes, you'll see why. Stay tuned. I didn't think that, you know, I had cancer. I just thought that because um, majority of women um, that have menstruals, sometimes we get lumps in our breasts. And so I thought that that was it. My second year uh, into the business, uh, my sophomore year, I was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer. And I felt just like I felt the day that my mom had passed. I felt hot all over, the room was quiet, and I can honestly say I had no clue. I had no clue what I was up against with cancer. Um, it was unfamiliar to me and my family. I would hear stories, I would read things, um, and I, get, I got too involved into WebMD, just reading and reading. I didn't know that it was uh, different layers or different type of categories with breast cancer. And so mine was aggressive, so everything I had to have was aggressive. I had my operation July of 2014. I had four surgeries in one day. They uh, found cancer in the lymph nodes. So um, it was a mastectomy, 41. Uh, lymph nodes removed. Uh, only one was infected. Um, I was stage two. Uh, they thought I could be stage three because of the size of the mast. So uh, it's a lot. Doing chemo six months, doing radiation six months. And radiation, I, I would never want to do that again. That radiation is taxing on your mind and your body. And um, because I'm fighting something that's, my name is Victoria for a reason. My mother gave me this name for, she didn't know. She thought that, you know, I was just this cute little princess when I was born, not knowing that that name Victoria, I was victorious. I've been fighting since I was born. I'm the youngest of nine and I was like, why? What did I do wrong? Who did I do something wrong to? Why me? And um, two years ago, in 2020, I stopped saying, why me? Why not me? Because I believe that God was like, I need you. And, you know, my business, I've been pivoting this business since I was diagnosed in 2014.
But during those times that I'm sitting in the chemo chair, I bring my laptop, I bring my, um, my iPod, um, and I'm Googling what ingredients I need to do because my skin is changing. Um, it's changing, it's feeling rough, it's looking rugged, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I went back into the kitchen, I went on to Google, and I called YouTube University, and I figured out that I need these type of oils and these organic butters and um, some antioxidants. So then I start playing around with them. And so during um, my last part of um, chemo, I really started to see a change because I saw the way my skin was acting. And then I, was, I started giving into some other chemo patients and it was like, oh my God, what is that? Because the ointments and the oils that they give you, it's harsh, it's harsh on your skin. It doesn't matter your nationality. And it just made me say, okay, I'm onto something. It's made by and for breast cancer patients and survivors. I changed my whole mission to being becoming a number one go-to brand for all cancer patients and survivors. It took me a while to just, you know, go through this, but my skin was changing. Even the physicians were like, what are you using? And I was like, if I tell you, I'm gonna have to kill you or you can pay for it. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't giving up my recipe and um, I'm just like Coca-Cola, you know, you got to sign it, you got to sign an NDA. As we spent time with Victoria, we got to learn more about her journey with cancer. It set her off on a newfound mission. She had already initially launched her business prior to getting diagnosed, but through the process that she had to endure through chemotherapy and radiation, she pivoted her business. And I'm excited to learn more about how she has turned this pain into purpose and how she is on this mission now to become the number one go-to brand for cancer patients and survivors. Hello. Hey, Mr. Gibson, how are you? Hey, well, Miss Victoria, how you feeling? I'm feeling good, brother. I'm Excellent. feeling so Excellent. good. So this is where all the magic takes place. Of course, this is where the magic happens, right okay, here. Okay, okay. Well, we are here to learn more about your journey and your story and how you have built your business into what it is now. But as I'm looking around, first and foremost, how long have you been in this location? I've been in this location for five years in the Stutz building. It okay. is a historic building and I love being here. Yeah, so the Stutz building's been around for years. This used yeah. to be a, what was a car manufacturer? Yep, car manufacturer. And literally cars were kind of rolling up and down yes. the halls out here. Yes. So they created a space for, you know, artists and other businesses to come here yes. and access the space to build their brands and organizations. That's right. Majority of them are artists uh, okay. because the former uh, owner, which is Woodward Turner, he uh, he's an artist himself. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, as I'm looking around, right, mm -hmm. there's a lot of flavor going on around here. I know, right? A little pink. <laughs> just a little <laughs> bit. Just a little bit. Pink, yeah. orange, white, cream, a little bit of everything. Yes. Like, what was the inspiration behind the design within this space? Um, so, I didn't know what I wanted until I went to a place called, um, it's in Broad Ripple. Uh, it's the cake, the cake bake place. Okay. So, they have all of these whimsical um, ch uh, cherub trees and all of the uh, hydrangeas coming down. Okay. So I was like, okay, so this was just a blank canvas, but I know that I wanted the paint to be totally white with some sparkles in it. And okay. so it took me uh, about three paint stores to go to to get 
all crisp winter white with a little bit of sparkle in it. Okay. And uh, I had a, a new uh, painter, her name is Nicole. Her and her team of interns, uh, she started painting maybe uh, three or four years ago. So okay. she came in and uh, I wanted the stripes to be horizontal. My nephews was like, no, we need them to go the other way. Yeah. Too much like, you know, prison. So, <laughs> so right, right, unbeknownst right. me, Sephora and Victoria's Secret has these stripes. Yeah. But they have pink. Okay. Right. So Victoria's Secrets have pink. And I think Sephora has uh, black and white. So, yeah. So, it really speaks to the pink tub brand, right? Like, yes. it, it catches you. It yells at you when you come in here. Yeah. The colors in here, it really demonstrates the vibrancy, right? Yes, as you as, as I've done research on your brand and your products, it replenishes the skin, That's right? It right. helps individuals walk around feeling Replenish, vibrant, right? Restore, rejuvenate, it does all of that. Now, as I'm as I'm looking over here, mm -hmm. what's what's that right within that frame right there? That is my first bar of soap. I okay. made it in 2012. Um, I started the pink tub in March of 2012. Started in uh, the Bronx of New York City. We had a little like five, 600 square foot apartment, one bedroom on the second floor on 184th Street, because I was brushing my teeth again in the bathroom. And I said, that's what I'm gonna name it, the pink tub, because everything is revolving around the tub or in the bathroom. You take a shower, you bathe, you, uh, you moisturize. All of that good stuff. So I made my first batch, uh, probably I think April the 1st. And my late husband was like, yeah, April food, that's not a bar of soap. And so he used <laughs> it that night. And I said, April food, it is a bar of soap. Okay. Um, so that's the first batch the, of The soap. very first one that you the made. The very first batch. It was cut from the very first batch. And as you can see, the labels are like, oh my God, is a two-year-old did that. No, okay. I'm just saying. So we went from there. So look at this. Look at our labels. So we've graduated Upgraded. from yeah, Upgraded. printing off the machine okay. to having a professional printer. And look at that. That's beautiful. That's amazing. It has our website on there. It has our logo on there. Okay. It has the ingredients. Whereas that one, you know, I typed all of that in. But um, we've graduated since then. Well, you, you got to start somewhere, right? I know, right? I think many people often assume that their big idea can start off in that big idea stage. No. And like what this demonstrates is there's levels to this, right? Yeah, you start off on, you know, you have to do the big wheel first. Before you get a bike, you know, you go, you graduate from the it's big a great, wheel, great analogy. right? Yeah. You start from the big wheel, then you get the bike with the trainer wheels. Then after, you know, after you, you know, get your mojo, then they take the, the, the trainer wheels off and listen, you're flying. Yeah. So you got to crawl before you walk. Okay. I tell anybody. Victoria is very animated. I guess that's a great way to put it, right? Uh, but her energy, her vibe is contagious. It's evident that she she's one of those individuals that holds the mindset that I'm not gonna look like what I've been through, right? And when you spend time with her, you know, you're inspired by her energy. But um, I had the opportunity to sit down with Victoria and she walked me through the step-by-step -step process. And we talked about many of the ingredients that she places in each and every single product that she creates. And also the intentionality behind how she selects certain ingredients. She kind of low-key did call me ashy, but I won't hold that against her everything that's right here, right? How many products do you have? I have a total of nine. So we have our uh, facial soaps, which is the newest thing to, the, uh, to our line. Our facial soaps, we have three. Okay. Uh, one, this one is for sensitive and dry skin. Uh, sorry, this is for oily skin. So if your face looks like Jermaine Jackson, forgive me. <laughs> Forgive me, Jermaine. Uh, if you look- Shout out to Jermaine Jackson. Shout out to Jermaine Jackson. If you look super oily, this is for you. Uh, this only this detoxifies your face. It has green, um, green clay and bentonite clay. So this is the detox and suck out all the oils. So uh -huh. for you, and it's also a daily facial cleanser and a face mask. Then we have our other one, which is in your face. That's what I use for combination skin. And then the one that we're about to make sometime uh, this week is Annabelle, and that's named after my mom, and that's for sensitive and dry skin. Okay. So if you're looking for dewy hydration skin and your skin is super sensitive, Annabelle is the facial soap for you. Again, all three of those soaps are two in one, daily facial cleanser and face mask.
with a little charisma and flavor. I know, right? It. She's actually. <laughs> so, so in a nutshell, there's soaps. Yep. There's lotions. Lotions. And then there's sugar scrubs. Sugar scrubs. Then we have our donut bath bombs. Okay. We can't forget about our amazing oils mm -hmm. with botanicals in there. Look at that. Hibiscus, lilies, jasmines. So they're amazing. And it's your favorite. Okay. It is butter butter. Butter butter. I mm -hmm. love it. I love it. Right? Now, how are you like when you initially started mm -hmm. your business, how are you coming up with the recipe, so to speak, for these products? So before I was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, I wanted hydration on and below the surface of the skin. What that means is when you get out the shower and you put on your whatever type of lotion you put on, and by the time you leave out, you're looking, you still looking ashy. You're looking like you shifting through some flour, something like that. <laughs> so um, when I had cancer, my skin became very scaly and tough. I looked like one. I was one of the uh, dragons on the Game of Thrones. Mm. So what I did is I went back into the kitchen and that's how the 553 method was um, made. Five vitamins, five moisturizers, and three antioxidants. Okay. That restores and replenishes your skin. So it helps instantaneously. And for anyone to have any type of cancer, doesn't matter what type of cancer you have, it works instantaneously, consistently. Yeah. Consistently. So if you bathe with our soap and then you put on our lotion or our sugar, uh, our lotion or our oil, or even our lotion bars, which is the newest thing to our product line. Okay. So if you use any one of those, you are hydrated with throughout the day. And um, also we start including UV ray ingredients, especially in our oils and our lotion bars. Okay. So when you're outside and in summertime, you're walking your dog, the kids, mm -hmm. and you're in the park, you are protected and also moisturized and you're looking glowy. Well, you don't want to look glowy. But, well, maybe yeah. you glow too. We yeah. get our glow up. Yeah, you get, get your glow, glow up. up. In Harlem, they have like an African shop. And so you can get organic essential oils, soaps. You can get the black soap from there. And so none of these products were um, giving me moisturization below the surface of the skin. It wouldn't last throughout the day. Um, the fragrance wouldn't last or either it was too potent. Uh, some products were just, you know, they cost a lot, but they didn't do what they said that they was going to do as far as moisturization. I was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna try to do something. I'm going to see what I can make. So Come essentially, on, you're, what you're doing, <laughs> When you started out, it was yes. more like trial and error. Yeah. Where you're you're mixing different ingredients yeah. to create the concoction or the recipe, so to speak. Yes. That is the products that they are today. Um yes. where where are you where are you getting many of these products from? Because they're all of this is handmade. Everything's yes. handmade. Everything right? is handmade. And we went we shifted into organic because that's mm -hmm. what helped during um, chemo, especially uh, chemo. Um, so what happened was we started looking at what ingredients were good for us. And so it had to be organic. If yeah. it's not organic, it had to be premium. If it's not premium, it had to be unrefined, meaning that it has not gone through the machinery. Like if you have um, uh, olive oil, they, it, it's not gone through the machinery. They mm -hmm. normally do, do it by hand or, or whatever they're doing, just like, but whatever they're doing, I'm like Breyer's ice cream. If I can read the ingredients and I understand what it is, then I'm gonna I can use that. But I'm never gonna put anything on in, in my products that I can't pronounce, yeah. that I can't spell, and I don't know the meaning of it. So we, you know, mimic that from Briar Ice Cream to make sure that the, when the customer reads it, they know exactly what's in their products. So one of the things that a lot of the masses put in their product is called tallow, and it's T-A-L-L-O-W. Okay. And so now they've been starting to put the E after the W. And so what that is, that is sheep or pig or goat's fat. And so what they do, they get a big machinery just like this one, maybe even larger than this, because mm -hmm. that's a 13 gallon. So what they do is they put that sheep, pig, or goat fat in there, and they render it. And so once it comes to the top, they scoop that off, they put it in another machine, and they manufacture it, and they put it in your soaps, they put it in your lotions. And this is the reason that when you go to the gym, when you go walking the dogs, or you're playing in the park with the kids, and you've taken your shower before you went out, and by the time you come back in, you smell like a barn animal. That is from tallow. <laughs> That's real. That's yeah. real. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, again, the passion that you have yes. for the mission that you're working towards is completely evident, right? Thank I, you. I love the energy that you're putting off, Victoria. She's extra. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the next question that I have for you is, like, starting out, 
what were some of like the initial equipment ev investments that you made to get this started? These. So okay. these look banged up because Pot -pots. these are my first, these are my two first babies. Okay. And so you see a little ditch here, a bang here, bang here. Because these are my new, this, these are my oldest one. That is my newest one. So you don't see that banged up. But I do not put food in here. This is only for our lotions, only for our soaps, and only for the oils that we make to put in our sugar scrubs. So this is just all um, organic ingredients that we use in these crock pots. No food at all. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is what we started out with. And so once we transitioned from New York City, shout out to New York and Brooklyn and the Bronx, then when we came here to Indianapolis, we, we, I got that one. Okay. And then I also got these two. These are 13 gallon tankers. And so they are capable of making a thousand bars of soap. Wow. Every two to three hours. So I can literally have 6,000 bars of soap made for a day, as opposed to these when I can only do at least 50 to maybe 100 a day. Mm. When I got nine ingredients, I'm sorry, nine products, and all nine products I do, uh, so the soaps and the lotions and the sugar scrubs, they mimic each other, so you can do a get, get a combo. So all of those are um, 10 fragrances. So you got 10 fragrances, nine products, and that's a lot. So, so you, but initially you started off with these. Two. Initially, I started off with those, and then so, I graduated to these. So, if someone is looking to start a business that's similar to yours, where yes. they're creating soaps yes. and hand lotions, what was like the financial investment? So, you know, I took my um, tax return. Well, are you saying just how much did it cost? Right. So these, like, this is like fifty-six dollars for okay. these two. So, my favorite to go to uh, to get my equipment. Amazon, mm -hmm. you can't beat it. Shipping is fast. Um, you can you can find everything that you need from your crock pots to your spoons to your spatulas to your bowls. You can get all of these from Amazon. And so what work worked for me was uh, getting it from Amazon, getting my um, my oils from Soper's Choice, which they also Columbus oil as well. But this is like my favorite. This is my go to. Oil, uh, as you see right here, when we say organic, we like literally mean organic. Because some people will tell you that and they'll charge you this high price for it's not a really organic. And it's not really organic. I okay. had um I have a returning customer. She was like, I don't know what they told me, but they told me it was with a lot of um olive oil. She said it did not work for her. Mm -hmm. And so um, I told her, I, sh I said, this is the reason I show my customers on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok that we use our products and we show I wanted we moisturization yeah. and hydration from my soap to my lotion to my oil. I didn't want to feel greasy. I didn't want any handprints on my clothing from my oil, my body oils. And I wanted them to um, be organic. So and you know every ingredient that goes into every right. product that you make. I know the ounce, I know the grams, I know the uh, how much it takes to put in there. It's just like baking a cake from scratch, like grandma would do, okay, and nana would do. You know, this is not no ready-made box, okay? Right. This is homemade, homemade, organic. organic from scratch. Built from these fingers, right? These hands. Thank you, no, God. These hands, because we're about to do it right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, God. These hands. Let's go. So first of all, you want to sanitize your products, right? Okay. So we got our we got our spools, right? We got our um, bowl. So you want to make sure you sanitize that. You can keep it in there. Um, and then same thing with your utensils because you're going to be using those. And you can spray these and put these over to the side. Okay. I love using um, paper towel because um, towels and things like that holds too much. Um, it holds too much bacteria. Moisture, moisture bacteria. So you want to make sure you don't want to, you don't want to use, I use paper towels because I need to see, you know, to make sure that my products or my utensils are clean. So okay. you take your spoon, it's already sprayed, boom. You come over here. Come on. All right, all right. We're going to take these out because we already did that. We're going to put this to the side and then we're going to take a scoop. We're going to we'll do it. Let's do about a good three scoops. Okay. One. Two. Three. Let's get another one. Let's another get a spoon. nice deep one. A nice, a nice juicy one. One juicy. more. Yeah, that's that's it. Okay. We can't be stingy now. <laughs> we got to make sure we have enough. Okay. Okay. So that's. So what's a, the next step after this? So the next step, 
We've already done that. Then we're going to get... Set this to the side. Yep, you set it to the side. So now we're going to put in our fragrance, okay? okay? So your favorite fragrance you love, what is that fragrance? That's the Butter Butter, right? Yes! Okay. So what we do here, um, we make sure we get our essential oils. I love me Nature's Garden, Crafter's Choice, and I can't forget Brambleberry. Those are my three go-to essential um, oils because it's not synthetic. Okay. If you smell a fragrance or you smell your product that's and it's making your head hurt, nine, 10 times out of 10, it's made with synthetic oils. Okay. okay. Now, when you're adding these, is this, is I can this measured or you, already, you just know? I just know. I know okay. by how it smells and I know how much to use. So we're just going to do a little bit. That's what I call a little bit. <laughs> and then we're going to put in some hazelnuts. So we got that in there. Okay, we got that. And so we got our paper towel. So if it starts to run, we are, we're good. Okay? okay. So then you want to make sure to take your spatula. Come okay. on, you can do it. And just mash. You know, you just want to mash. Yeah. You know, and you don't want to fold it together yet. And then while you're doing that, I'm going to get your um, mixer ready. And this okay. is a hand mixer. And it's great for... Um, what, is, what this mixer would do, it's going to mix all of the fragrance in there so that it won't, you know, uh, aggravate your skin. Okay. And then it's going to get your, your it's going to get it as fluffy as I like it to be. Okay. Okay. So we got that done. So that's fine. That's beautiful. You did a good job. Okay. For your first time. I'm a natural. Okay. So then you want to start. somebody. <laughs> so you're going to push this um, down, right? And we're going to start at the lowest one. Okay. We're going to go around because we're going to start to mix it first. Good job. And you want to go around just like you're baking the cake with mama. Okay. Okay. Now you see how it's doing now. Okay. Now we're going to breaking turn... it down a little bit. Right. And so now we want to go uh, a little bit up on the speed. Okay. So that way is right here. So you want to hit the plus sign. Bring it up some more. Keep on going. Yeah. Bring it up a little bit more. All right. Look at that. Now look at what it's doing now. Okay. It's taking it to a different form. It's making it creamy. It's giving me the consistency that I want. It smells good too. I know, right? That's your butter butter, baby. It literally smells like you're baking a cake. All right, and it looks like you're baking a cake or some pancakes. Look how creamy that is. Look how amazing it is. It's like a souffle. Um, it's like a, a pancake batter. But look how amazing that looks. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to have. That's the consistency that you want. That's how you want it to look before you put it into one of your jaws. Okay, now let me okay? know when. So just a little bit more. We want to go up maybe two more notches. Okay. And then we're almost done. We're done. So we're going to go a little bit more. Make sure you get around the side. Yeah. That is beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. So now we're done. So then we're going to do this and let it go a little bit. Boom. And then we do this like so. Then you want to fold it now. Okay. Because you're getting ready to put it in, into your Ziploc. Now, some people would choose to do um, what they call is, is when they make a baking a cake. And they're making, uh, but I love to use a Ziploc bag. It is cheaper for me. Mm -hmm. And it is most conducive for me, um, um, budget-wise. So you got your, um, your Ziploc bag. Bam. And then you're just going to fold this, right? So you're going to take this. Look at this. Look how creamy this is. Look how amazing this is. Imagine this going onto your body, your face, your feet. I think one of your guys had told me he used um, our Butter Butter um, lotion. What did it do to your feet? Made it smooth, huh? Right? Smooth like what? Butter, what? baby. <laughs> now look at this. Look at the consistency. Look at this. Imagine this going on your body, your face, your feet. Listen, them knees, them elbows. You didn't turn this into uh, an ad, an ad promotion. Oh, I think thank it, I think you. it's sold by now. Okay, so sold out. That's what I'm gonna hear. Sold out, and so we have that, and you do that like so. And then from here, you just pretty much just package it. Yeah. Put it into and the you package it containers. And, yes, and you put it into the containers. Look at that, and then we're gonna put a little bit because we can do that now, because um, we're not gonna put the rest of this in there. But look at this. Looking compared to, I'm gonna do your arms. Okay. And then I'm gonna put the rest of my arms because they ashy too. Okay, so then you want this. Look at this. Look at the consistency. Look, it. I, I haven't gone here yet, but watch this. 
Look how it's glowing. Look at the hydration. Look at the remorseration on here. Look at the rejuvenation. So what it's doing, this is what it's doing for your skin. It's restoring your skin. It's replenishing your skin. It's bringing it back to a healthier form. Look at that. Glow. Okay, look at that. And girl, these, uh, these elbows is ashy. Feels smooth as well. Right? And so if you feel a little grit at the end, that's the jojoba beads. And they're restoring your skin. Back to a healthier form and glow. Now, Victoria has done an incredible job at building her business. The value is there. The products are incredible and amazing. Her focus right now is really on enhancing her overall brand. So I invited my friend Shalonda Johnson from Identity Marketing and Branding to come and have a conversation and break down some strategies that Victoria can begin to implement that would help her enhance her brand from a design standpoint, her website, social media presence, as well as SEO optimization. Shalonda broke down some great strategies that Victoria can begin to implement right now that will help her build more awareness around the pink tub. Question for yes. you. Where do you see your business in three to five years? In three to five years, I want to be throughout the 50 states. Uh, within the next eight to 10 years, I want to be globally. I want to be up there where the mass is um, all, all, in all seven continents. That's my. Uh, um, my value proposition is to be in all seven continents to help because it's 19.3 million cases of cancer every day worldwide. And so I want to be that number one go to brand for all cancer patients and survivors. Yeah. Okay. When we talk about marketing and branding. One of the things that we really, really try to hone in on is your brand voice. Yes. So with you telling your story, I, I see a lot of expression. I see a lot of hope. Thank you. I see a lot of excitement and we want to make sure that when we're talking about a brand, not just the logo, right. but actually how your website is worded, how your marketing material is created. We want to make sure that your brand voice is represented in that. And so when I was looking at your website and your social media profiles, I felt encouraged and happy and well, bright. Thank you. And that is a true reflection of how you're telling your story. So I, I think from that standpoint, you've been very, very effective. You've tapped into one of the things that as, as marketing strategists, we really, really try to tell our clients that we want you to sell your story because yeah. people buy into stories, not necessarily the product, but how you sell it and telling your story. So I'm going to ask you this. What sets you apart from any other skincare line or any other um, beauty line? What sets you apart? One is handmade. Okay from scratch, like your Nana or your grandmama would make. We're taking, we're talking about, you know, not a ready-made Pillsbury dough box. We're talking about the vanilla extract when you're making a cake mm -hmm. or the shifting of the flour or the baking powder, or even separating the yolk from the um, from the egg, right? So right. the yolk from the white. So right. we do it from scratch, right. everything. We're talking about the lotion. When we talk about your oils, your emulsifiers, what oils work good for your skin across the board. It doesn't matter your nationality or your skin type. It works well. And the moisturization, the moisture five moisturizers, they help to uh, restore your skin and keep restoring your skin from our soaps to our lotions to our body oils to our sugar scrubs. All of it is centered around the five five three method. Mm. Okay, okay, wonderful. One of the things I wanted to bring up as well as I was looking at your social media profiles and your website, you have a great following. Thank you. So you've done a really good job with gaining followers. Um, when I actually googled you, you ranked pretty high. Really? Uh, yes, definitely. You have Google reviews, all of the things that we look for um, when it comes to marketing. One of the things that I wanted to talk with you about, though, is do you actually study those analytics? So although you have that traffic, mm -hmm. do you actually know what your target audience is looking for? Or do you know um, who's actually attracted to your website or your social media profiles? So, so for example, mm -hmm. um, if I am in the market for skincare, and I Google your business or skincare products near me or handmade skincare products, do you know what my um, Google search is typically like as a consumer? So there's a platform form called Google Analytics. Yeah. And so if I have visited your site before, you can actually go in on Google Analytics and study, Perfect. okay, she typically looks at entertainment or she typically looks at um, beauty products, and you can get to know the profile of your uh, target market. Okay. So I wanted to ask you, do you ever tap into any of those analytics? Not, none. I have, um, I wear multiple heads, and it's hard okay. yeah. to do everything. Yeah. Especially when you're doing anything, um, you're making 
lotion, soap, and sugar scrubs from scratch. Yeah. And so my creative spirit is like, I need to create. I need to make sure these products are top notch. I need to make sure that everything is done accordingly. But then when it comes to the marketing, when it comes to the analytics, when it comes to the backlinks, when it yeah. comes to um, knowing those keywords to put in, mm -hmm. I have I don't have that type of time or the capability to do that. Yeah. But I'm finding someone I'm looking for someone that's a virtual assistant that can be able to handle that as well as my consultant. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's most visionaries don't. Yeah. Most visionaries want to cast vision. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely understandable. I think with really studying your analytics, you will be able to hone in and really, really target, even through social media ads and Google ads, who you want to attract. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about um, your product photography and your content. So I think you're at a unique stage in your business now where you can kind of take up to the next level, your content. Yes. So usually when you're starting out, people are forgiving. Yes. So if I'm taking a picture of myself in my bedroom with my mm -hmm. products, they're forgiving to that. But you have reached, I, I believe, a stage in your business where now your, your product photography is important. How you're presenting your products, how you're presenting your content, even the content with you. And if you have someone that's doing a review and you take a picture of that, all of that is now important mm -hmm. because now you've established this great brand and people are are buying into this product, into this brand. But now they want to see the professionalism. Mm -hmm. They want to see that, OK, she's been established for some years. Um, one of the things that a consumer looks at, and, and this is this is proven, they typically go to your social media page before your website now. Really? So if your social media posts aren't um, actually being social, if you're not responding one time, if you're not you know interacting with your audience, if the picture isn't that professional, if it isn't the best quality, they're looking at all of that. Wow. So I think at this point in your business will be a great time to get that marketing help and those professional photographers and videographers to take your content to the next level. Okay. And, and I love what Shalanda is is really bringing to the table here, where she's describing the importance of understanding your customer base. Yeah. Right? There's an old saying in marketing that says, "If you want to be the one that Jane Smith buys, learn to see things through Jane Smith eyes." Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. Understanding what her needs are, um, you know, what her tendencies are, so that you can begin to curate your copywriting, your marketing strategies, and your overall branding to be able to connect with that specific target audience. And I love the fact that she's also describing how really just raising the standard with your brand, right? And creating a standard of excellence so that when people come to your social media platforms, they understand that this is a brand that is providing organic products. Yes. They're handmade and it provides a solution to replenish skin in ways that is unmatched in the industry. Yes. And I believe you can double down on that and really begin to amplify your business by simply connecting with your target audience by leveraging those insights that she's sharing. Oh, well, thank you. I, I definitely need that. One of the things that I've really noticed with entrepreneurs at this stage in their business is that they really have to start honing in on perfecting how they're being represented online, on their website, and on social media. So although she has a great following and a great Google presence, we really discussed how we can really take that presence to the next level by perfecting some of her product photography and different things that she has online to represent her brand. And I think that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs are at a stage where they have to really, really hone in on making sure their products are being represented well. So it's something I think a lot of entrepreneurs can benefit from. Victoria's story is a story of converting your pain into your purpose. I'm a firm believer that if life has a purpose, then there's meaning in our suffering. And it's up to us to find the meaning in that suffering that we experience from day to day. And understand that just because you experience something doesn't make you less than or make you less valuable. But ultimately, these experiences that we have bring out the best in us. And it's not just for us to feel the pain that we may have to endure as we go through the suffering, as we go through those challenges, but it's us to gain the experience in a way that we become better and therefore provide value to others because of those experiences. And again, Victoria is an example of just that. 
where she took a situation that completely turned her life upside down. She stepped into a territory that was extremely unfamiliar, uh, a lot of uncertainties, and I can only imagine the different struggles that she had to endure, whether it was physically or mentally and emotionally. But she found a way to rise above that, and not only that, she found a newfound mission. Right, a new mission to begin to serve and provide value to other individuals that experienced the same thing that she overcame. You have to give it all to God. You have to. I'm just a vessel. I stopped saying, why me? Why not me? Um, because I have a big mouth and God knows that I'm gonna tell everyone what he's done for me. If you're looking to start a business, do it. Get a piece of paper, a crayon, map it out what you're going to do because you need structure. Everything looks beautiful in your head, but when you have when it's down on paper, that's when you can see. You know, you taking that vision from mental to paper, from paper to action. And make sure that when you love it, you thinking about it, you go to sleep uh, thinking about it, you wake up thinking about it. And if it's all of those things, then that's what you're meant to do and ride the wheels till it fall off. You're gonna go through, you're gonna pivot, you're gonna have things like what the pandemic happened. I had cancer, I lost my late husband, I relocated from New York City to Indianapolis, then the pandemic happened, and now we in a, we're, we're going into a recession. Uh, that's five things, and that could deter anyone you know, but you have to give it to God. And if it's meant for you, and if if you if you're thinking about it, eating about it, sleeping about it, walking about it, then that's what you should do. And make sure you do it better than anybody We're else. Gonna rise up. We're gonna rise up higher than I mean, truly when I had that like initial light bulb moment of like, wow, Indianapolis doesn't have a gluten-free artisan bakery. Like I'm gonna make this, I know it's gonna be successful. Like I knew um, basically from that moment, I was so confident that it was just gonna work. Yeah.